Hey everyone, uh, this is for my buddy Q who most recently hit me up. Um, me and him go way back, back, we used to play ball back in high school. Uh, there's gonna be a few people who watch this who are gonna know exactly who Q is. Awesome dude, um, made this video for you brother. Uh, he reached out to me in regards to some simple advice on how to start an eco-friendly lawn care business from scratch. Scratch, like how, like if I were to go and start right now from nothing, what I would do. Um, so here's some some quick tips. Uh, a couple of, uh, uh, let's see, a couple of points I would make that really I learned later on in the game that made a huge impact. Uh, first thing I would start off is uh, just to mention keep your costs low. Don't go fancy with it. Keep your costs low when you first start out. Um, you know, they have basic equipment that you can use to maintain properties. Very low cost, especially when you go the electric route because you don't have any maintenance on any of the equipment you use. Um, so one of the first things I would do, get your business name. Uh, figure out what you want to call your business name. Register it with your state so that way you have it filed in there. Um, I'm not sure what it is over in California where, where you have to go and register your business name, but figure out where you have to go to register it through the state of California. And then the next thing I would do is try to find a web designer or, or to keep costs low, make a WordPress site and there are a ton of videos on how to design your own web, uh, your own web page or website through WordPress. Really simple. I made probably 80% of my website. I did hire someone eventually to go through, kind of restructure it, and then I kind of take over everything from there. So WordPress site, definitely do that. And the reason why I stress the importance of having a website is when you have a website up, people can find you on the internet. And that's where everyone does their searching. People don't go into yellow pages, newspapers, really any advertisements to look for your business. They go online, they search on their phone, their tablet, whatever it is, um, go digital with it. And this way you can start to build your SEO. Also look up what SEO is. This is essentially SEO search engine optimization, which dictates your, your ranking on website, Google, for when people search for lawn care in your area, you wanna show up there in your ranking. It takes a lot of time, there's a lot to it. Ton of information online on how you can do it yourself. Um, definitely worth it. So beginning of this year, February, I probably put 70 to 80 hours in into redoing the SEO and setting up my site to make it compatible with SEO and Google and everything that they read. And like literally as the season came, uh, as the season progressed, um, I was getting calls all the time, just people go like searching on Google for me. Like I'd be in the middle of a job, someone call my phone, say they found me on Google, and then bam, I would land a job where I would land a job like that. I'd probably get roughly. Uh, it's nothing crazy, but I'm going to say between two to seven calls a week from people finding me on Google, having my number, reaching out to me, calling me, and I'll go out, give them estimates, and uh, um, it's just you're generating traffic without having to do any physical work like handing out flyers. Um, I'll touch on that in a little bit about handing out flyers. Um, so yeah, definitely work on getting the website set up. Go to GoDaddy, HostGator. Um, any website hosting and um, you could buy your domain, pay for your website hosting for the year, a little bit of upfront cost, probably cost you right around $200 to get that done, but you'll make your money back on that quick. Like I promise you, like going in and putting the work in to set up my SEO was probably one of the greatest ROIs that I've had this year on my business and getting return on marketing. Um, there's a couple other things I did that had a pretty decent return. Um, so get your website up. Another quick and easy thing, business cards. Say you want to get business cards. I put your name on there, your contact information. You can put your social media information if you want to put that on there. I also recommend putting your business on any of the social media platforms that you can. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, Pinterest, um, just any, any, any social media site will be good. It'll increase... Um, your exposure for people seeing your, your company, your business, brand awareness, and allows more options when you go to search your company online, all those things are gonna pop up whenever they're looking for your company. They'll see any social media platform and what you're associated with. 
And you can do a lot of free advertising on there to help spread the word of what you're trying to do. Reach out to your friends, your family members, coworkers. Literally just spread the word, hand out your business cards, and try to generate as much word of mouth as you can because you're starting the business, you want to keep your costs low. Word of mouth doesn't cost anything. Posting something on Facebook doesn't cost you anything. Uh, someone might see it, share it, they might know someone who knows someone who knows someone and they call you. Like you just travel word of mouth. Like there's these little low cost widgets that you can use to promote your business that don't cost you anything. Um, so business cards, get on social media, set up your website. Like those are three good things to um, kind of get your name, your business out there so you can start marketing it at a very low cost. Then, um, well, I'm gonna touch a little bit on equipment now. So when it comes to electric equipment, uh, I'll be straight up with you. Like we buy majority of our electric equipment from Home Depot and Lowe's. Uh, just because there's not a huge commercial field for it, still does make some products, but they're really expensive. Good quality, I have some of them, they they seem to work really well, they hold up, but the upfront cost is astronomical in comparison to your other options. Uh, what I would do is, uh, what personally we use, we use Echo hand, uh, the, the Echo trimmers for our hand equipment, we use them for our edgers and our weed ears, and they have a power head on it, um, so you can essentially change out the ends, so again, this will help with your keeping your costs low. You can buy one power head, and I recommend doing the 2017 model because that one has the power head in which you can exchange. You can put an edger on there, a weed eater, or a longer hedge trimmer. Like it's, a, it's an all-in-one package. They're about 200 bucks, and then it comes with a weed eater already. You will have to buy the edger attachment and a hedge trimmer attachment. 200 bucks. Um, we'll get you both of those. Your edger is $90, the attachment for it. Your hedge trimmer is about $120 to put it on there. And then you kind of have an all-in-one unit. Uh, you're not going to need a lot of separate units starting off because I um, imagine you're not going to have a huge vol work volume or amount of properties you have to take care of. Uh, but as you continue to grow, then maybe go and buy another one and go buy another one um, to kind of meet up with your demand because they don't last forever. They are homeowner grade, but... For instance, we do over 100 properties a week with the ones we have. I have a dedicated edger one, a one room for weed eater, and another one with a hedge trimmer. And that's all we use for all of our properties. So that kind of goes over your hand equipment. Uh, for blowers in the electric market, there's not, there's not a whole lot of options, but I will recommend two of them for you. The first one being um, Ego. So Ego makes a pretty good uh, electric backpack blower. It has, uh, I'm gonna say right around 600 CFM, which is the strongest one on the market. So CFM is how you judge how much um, debris or how much wind is pushed out of the tube of your blower. So 600 CFM seems to be the strongest one on the market. The next one right below it is gonna be your Greenworks backpack blower. Uh, they're both roughly the same price. I think the Greenworks is gonna be a little bit cheaper. Uh, the CFM on that one is five is five eighty, so it's a difference between uh, twenty CFM on um, on the two of them. Your Greenworks blower I know is right about two hundred, and I think your uh, your Ego backpack blower is right around two fifty or so. Um, and this is in in Florida with the stores that we're dealing with. It could be a little bit different with the stores that you work with. Um, so I'd recommend one of those two brands for your for your blow blower and then when it comes to your mower there's a there's a ton of options but i would stick to one of those two brands when it comes to your electric push mowers uh, i believe each of them um, both greenworks and ego make a self-propelled electric mower um so i would go they're both range right around 500 in the in the 500 dollars range for your um, self-propelled push mowers if you want to scale back and kind of save a little bit of money up front you can use um, just a standard electric push mower where you're manually having to put, do the work and push it around. And then maybe as you get more clients, you can upgrade to the self-propelled or you could just go to the self-propelled um, up front. Uh, so that's going to really cover the basis of your equipment. Um, I would imagine for your startup costs on your equipment, going the electric route, um, you could probably do it between $1,000 to $1,500 altogether for startup costs on your equipment. Um, so we covered some advertising, we covered some equipment that we would use. Uh, the next thing is, uh, I would also look at your competitors in your area, like who's doing lawn care and landscaping, 
um, even like reach out to them and maybe get some advice, hints and tips from them. Because again, your landscapes are different than what they are here in Florida. But there are people who I'm sure have successful lawn care landscaping businesses in which you can network with, reach out, kind of see what tips and tricks might work for them in your geographical area. Um, but uh, you know, look around, see what your competitors are doing, see what you can do better th than them. Because uh, here there is a ton of competition, but there is a ton of them who are just absolutely garbage. Like they're just terrible, and um, and those are clients that are pretty easy to take up. Um, you know, main things businesses seem to struggle in the lawn care industry is showing up on time, having attention to detail, communication with your clients. Like whenever someone calls you, make sure you call them back, answer your phone. There will be a ton of people who, if you don't answer your phone, aren't going to leave a voicemail, and that's going to be a, a customer you're not going to get back. So make sure, like, always, always, always answer your phone. Um, there's a lot of guys in this industry who um, who don't who just don't do that. The number of calls I received like this year, and the people were static because I answered my phone because the past four companies before they called me did not. They had to leave a voicemail or they just didn't leave one. Um, so answer your phone. Know that like you're on top of your game. That's what it looks like. Like. When you answer your phone and you're prompt ready, greet them professionally. Like, hey, this is Q with Q Cuts. Um, you know, just for example, what can I do for you? How can I help you? Um, you know, see see what you know. Figure out what the reason is. Just sound professional. Figure out what your line is whenever um, you go to take a call. And like, think of that before you start taking taking calls, answering messages, things like that. Figure out how you want to present yourself. Um, Another quick tip uh, that will be beneficial, look professional. Even if you're just starting out, go and get like a handful of t-shirts made, put like your logo on there, um, assuming you have one. If you don't have one, get a graphic designer, look up a graphic designer, network, find someone to create you a logo that's gonna stand out from what's in your area. Um, anyhow, put your information on a shirt and then um, put on some khaki shorts, some pants, look something that looks professional. Like don't go out there in a white beater, gym shorts, any of that. Hold yourself to a standard and look professional while you're out there. And right off the bat, you're going to have a better first impression than other competition who's like coming up there and um, their basketball clothes or gym clothes. Like don't, don't be that guy. Like a lot of new guys make that mistake of just going out there. I used to do that. Like uh, I used to go out there in like t-shirts, jeans or whatever and uh, it just it just looked bad and like all of a sudden like I'll be working out in the field now and people will stop like oh you guys look all professional everyone's uniform like think about from like the customer's perspective whenever you're having someone come to your home to work on your property that's around the things you've worked to build up to own and like like your property and your homes like your your empire like that's all the work you do outside of being home was to purchase that home and to provide for a, a certain living that either you want or your family wants. Um, and so like people want other ser service guys to look professional. They don't wanna worry about um, uh, if they're if the guy who's gonna be on their property is gonna rob them, steal steal something, or anything of that manner. Just just look professional. That'll be another quick hurdle you'll, you'll, you'll accomplish um, right off the bat. Cause a lot of times a lot of guys will wait a while to pick up their perfect professionalism and uh, just get uniforms made so um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy get something that's comfortable for you to work outdoors with and for you to um, spend all, all day working in um, we use uh, it's by um, uh, I don't have one of my shirts by me um, but something that is pretty lightweight Breathable, so you don't get too hot being out outside and um, outside working all day. Tons of options, cheap options that you can use. Get some shirts made up. Um, what else? Uh, you did ask how I started my business, so I'll answer our touch base on that real quick. So when I started mine, I had a dirt bike, and I sold my dirt bike. Uh, I used to race back in high school and ride around on um, the motocross tracks on the weekends. But then as I got to start, when I got to high school and started playing football, I stopped riding because I kept getting hurt all the time. So I had a bike that was sitting there, so I sold it. And that's what, that was what created the initial funds to start my business. I bought a trailer, 
um, edger, weed eater, blower, mower, full nine yards on that. Um, I spent all the money on a dirt bike, bought the equipment, and then I was also working two other jobs at the same time. So that's another thing, whenever you're starting lawn care and you wanna go full time, it's gonna be hard just to jump into it and do it full time. If you have another, another income currently or another job that you at, lawn care is easy to add that as what everyone refers to as a side hustle. Like until you can build enough revenue, enough customer base, build a reputation in your area, you can have that as a side hustle until you can build it up enough and do it full time. The flip side of that is if you don't do it on the side and you wanna jump into it doing full time, network, like find networking groups in your area and that'll be one of the quickest ways to get the word of mouth out, um, you know, that you're, you're in business for lawn care, landscaping, maintenance to um, take care of people's properties, like find local networking groups. You could, there should be a ton of them by you that are free, open to the public. Um, look for ones that are um, uh, advertised toward real estate agents. Start, you know, building relationships with people who are in the market. I, every year I do a ton of jobs that are cleanups and re-landscapes for people who are purchasing homes, redoing everything, like they're essentially flipping the home, so buy them. We'll go through, redo their landscaping, provide the lawn maintenance for them while it's on the market, and then they sell it. So there's a market for that to get in there to do their landscape installs and to do the, the maintenance for them until the house sells. Um, so that's like another another big um, market you can get into. I would try to reach out to property managers, people who are going to be working with several properties at once. They oversee them. They work with a ton of vendors from guys who do pest control, lawn maintenance, um, pressure washing, and just anything, anything, any everything and anything that you need to maintain a property on a regular basis. Um, if you rent from someone right now, See what vendors they're using. Maybe you can even reach out to them and get on their vendor list. Um, but most of the time, when you start getting in that field, you kind of need to be. You need to have your um, business license, which is gonna. You're gonna have to ask around, uh, do some research online of how to acquire your business license. Uh, essentially, it'll start with you filing your business name through the state of California. You're gonna get your e register for an EIN number, which is gonna be the number that identifies your business. It's called an, an employer identification number. And then once you have that, you can apply to get your business license, which is a tax or a fee that you pay in order to operate your business within your county. Um, that's how it is here. That's what I had to do. Uh, it should be. I'm assuming it'll be pretty similar where you're at as a uh, registered business license, get your EIN, and then you can get your business license. And then from that point, you can go and apply to get insurance, uh, general liability insurance, really cheap, um, especially for lawn care, like the cost of it's relatively low. Um, people like to know that you're insured in order to work on any commercial properties, you have to have general liability insurance. Um, some of them are also going to require workers' comp. I carry workers' comp as well. And uh, some of them do require to have commercial auto insurance depending on who you're working with. Um, but again, those are kind of further down the road. When it comes to commercial accounts, you really want to get your experience with your residential market um, and kind of grow, your, grow, grow a feel for the industry, um, get experience underneath your belt, kind of see what works for you, what doesn't. And um, uh, what else here? What else can I shoot you that's going to help you out? Um, I really think those are going to be the main points that are keen to keep your costs low, spread the word of your business. And um, um, yeah, I mean, that's essentially what, what I would do if I was a startup. Just go through, get that website designed, um, get your website made up register through your state uh, for your business just so legality pur purposes that you're covered and then network network and network because the more people know about you and what you do the more people who can reach out to you um, so i hope this was helpful for you man if you have additional questions um, or anything please hit me up uh, message me on LinkedIn or Facebook. I think you're on both of those with mine or Instagram or if anyone else who sees this has questions about lawn care, starting a, um, a lawn care business or really any other business, um, hit me up. I'd be glad to help you out. If you want some 
further details, ask me specific questions. I'll go, I'll make sure I go 110% out of my way to make sure I can help you out, answer those questions, kind of put you in the right direction. Hopefully this video will do that for you, kind of give you a basis of where to start. And I'm sure you have a ton of questions that are popping up in your head. Um, write them down, I'll answer them for you. Appreciate you reaching out to me, brother. And uh, I wish you all the success and hope your business kicks ass.